Hi there, I'm Trolls. Welcome to Sound Paint. In this video, we're gonna go back in time. In fact, let me try to just like, see if I can adjust a little bit. Is that better? Or is that a little too old? Okay, maybe like, let's dial it like back a little bit, like just like here. Yeah, we're back in time. Um, I don't wanna saturate the image so much that we're back in the 1940s, but that's actually where this whole story begins. Welcome to Mellow, which is really a iteration a modern interpretation or reimagination of the original Mellotron. The Mellotron has a really interesting backstory because it actually didn't begin with a Mellotron. And perhaps before we even get into this, let me just explain what this whole concept of Mellotron is about and why this library is special. Way back before we had computers, we're back in 1949. There's an awesome guy, his name was Harry Chamberlain, here in California as well, that got the idea of making a new form of instrument. A sampler, if you will. I mean, way back before we had computers, of course. What he did was to create a keyboard, a mechanical keyboard, and then when you press the key, that would roll a given amount of tape with a recording on it. So he actually did the first multi-sampling, I think, ever done, having musicians play different keys, recording all of those to tape, and when you click a given key on your keyboard, that tape would roll, and that became the Mellotron. Or, correction, it became the Chamberlain. From 1949 to 1956, Harry Chamberlain was developing these machines and he did different marks of them, different versions of them, and they sort of evolved over time. Around, I think it was around 1956, he had a sales representative. His name was Bill Franson, and Bill Franson was selling the Chamberlains on market and he grabbed two of them and took them to England. But in that process, he stripped the Chamberlain logo and put his own name, Franzen, on it. So he was trying to sell someone else's instruments, but branding himself in it. But he also added an additional thought to his process. Even though this was blatantly copy-paste, kind of thefty, he wanted to expand upon this concept and get more rolls of tape. And he ganged up with another group of engineers and they expanded upon it. I think they did like 73 keys, something like that, where they recorded every single key um, whether it was flutes or violins or these different kind of instruments, and that became the Mellotron. But the Mellotron's big brother is actually that of the Chamberlain. And I think it's an important distinction to make, just so we know the history behind it, even though the Mellotron is totally what we all know, see, and hear all the time. The Mellotron has been used over time in so many different productions, probably most known by the Beatles on Strawberry Fields, using some of the presets. And there's some hilarious stories back with the recordings. Uh, for example, the infamous cello patch in the Mellotron was um, a cellist playing, but she refused to drop tune her instrument, meaning tuning it down to get a few extra notes. So they had to hire a bassist. And that's sort of the old school classical world for you. You would only do exactly what the instrument dictated, what you were taught in school, and that became that. But there's some timeless, beautiful recordings in the Mellotron and in the Chamberlains as well. Uh, for example, Marvin Gaye used the Chamberlain, not the Mellotron, but further ahead in time, so many artists have used the Mellotron. And it's virtually the same concept. It's a bunch of tape rolling with different kind of recordings on them. So I've been thinking about this for years because I love the notion of recording to tape. And we're so fortunate to be sitting on probably the largest deep sample catalog of samples in the world. So we're not really restricted just to like 70 keys. We can do thousands. In this case, it's over 9,000 samples that we then took and processed to tape to get that same vintage wobbly nature that's so popular right now, particularly in hip hop and R&B, to get us back in time and really feel we're there with the original recordings. But we're actually doing stuff like round robin, which obviously you couldn't do in the original Mellotron. So when you play the key multiple times, the same key, you'll actually generate a different kind of sample with different tape saturations and wobble to it and all that stuff. So it's really, really a library that's alive. And I'm so excited to present it to you guys because it's one of those things where the computer becomes alive. And my ambition for Sound Paint has always been to create an engine that's alive, something that feels it has a moving heartbeat in it. It's not a static computer perfectly sequenced on the grid. In fact, it's the opposite. It's something with life and something that wants to tell a story. Obviously, this stuff that you're about to hear has gone through a variety of analog processing and tape, so you're really gonna hear a dusty old sound. And that's the whole vibe of Melo. But before we get into it, let me just um, quickly explain how we're gonna roll. Um, I just wanna show you a couple of different programs and parts just to give you an idea about how the library is organized and how the different things are sounding. But 
also have a variety of guest musicians, in particular that fabulously talented Natalie Tendenbaum, who's really, really going to take this library for a deep spin. And you can always read in our chapter description if you don't want to hear my rambling or my layman's playing, just scroll straight to Natalie or some of the artists we got later in the video. It's just a phenomenal library and I'm so excited to bring it to you guys. Um, it just brings the past back to the future, if you will. One of our customers actually described it in the best way. He said it was the future of retro. So let's get in there and dig for some sample gold. And you can really hear that tape. And you see that every time I click a key, it's a different kind of wobble. And that's really where the round robin sort of concept comes in that, that every time you play something, it has a little bit of natural variation going on. Super sweet. It has sort of that old school quality to it. It's not super fat, but there's some warmth in the bottom. And I think in this particular patch here, there's also a little bit of bit brush going in, which creates that sort of extra dusty feeling. One of the cool concepts of the orchestral patches in the library is that they're fully multi-sampled across the entire spectrum of the keyboard, all the way down to the deepest notes. Which really gives you the ability to play a really massive ensemble if you want, or just a sweet solo. And you can see in this case here, there's a Sforzando and a Mikado combined. It gives that little extra swoop on the end. Someone should do like a retro rendition of 2001. that dirt like it's just a dirty sound a little bit like the doors maybe disaster brass So you can hear it has that dirty quality to it, but also with a modern take. This is a little more than a traditional Mellotron could probably do, but there's still something old dusty, even though we're sort of in the epic realm. I guess it's a sort of unique combo that way.
sure you love this one. For me, it's uh, one of Nicolas Simrad's like tricks to do this kind of. So you always like. You can use it as a rhythmic tool. Or even just like. Really old. And let me try to remove the effects from this one here so you can really hear what it is. It's a real Hammond organ, but recorded on real tape so you can really hear the saturation. Hear that? That really like... So dirty. string hits. Isn't that cool? It's sort of a signature piano, if you will. I'd never heard something quite like this. It just has a really distinctive sort of DX7 versus and piano, old school, mixed into tape and saturated. And you can hear all the multi samples. It's really a real instrument that way. I love this one. It's a harpsichord and an organ sort of combined. And if you want to see a unique EQ profile, check this one out here. I was trying to build the piano from John Lennon's Imagine. And if you notice here, there's notably less frequencies in the bottom and then it gets a little bit bright in the end. It's sort of a unique thing. Um, I just did it by ear, um, but it seems to be pretty close to the original one. And then when I move out the mod wheel here, um, the stereo field will expand. So it's a little bit like going through time. Uh, it's very old in the beginning, but if you have headphones on or wide speakers, you're really gonna hear this beautiful sort of stereo sound emerge.
Leslie's lover. And in this case here, I'm morphing two different takes from an original B2 Hammond organ. One doesn't have vibrato, even though the tape sort of sounds a little bit like vibrato. But when I move the morph up here, And you can hear the tape actually rain out here. Let me just hold down a key here. And we'll wait for about nine, 10 seconds. The tape actually runs out. So that's one of the details in the library to really build the original sort of mellow feel that we're trying to pay on a match to that as well. So, I mean, you don't need more than 10 seconds of sustain when you're in mellow world anyway. Is that dirty? Oh, this is so cool. Um, it's actually morphing uh, a Wurlitzer with brass sounds. Let me just try to play them independently here. And the other one. But in this case, we're morphing the two sounds together, which gives this very sort of unique sound. Oh, that's a cool one. Um, you can hear that it's not the same sample every time. Kind of different vibes to them. Oh, cool. So woodwinds on Motwill here. You can almost hear the overtone of the woods. This is the kind of shit that a synthesizer can't do where you need real acoustics. There's just a grindy sort of imprecise nature, like a human experience in this sound here. Pat Revenge. So this is what I would call a masterful program. This is one of Turek's patches. Uh, he's using sustained woodwinds with woodwind trills, but really with a delicate usage of effect. There's only two here, but they're really beefed up, particularly the delay rain here. And it just creates this super beautiful, I guess you can play it eerie, but let me try to play something beautiful with the two um, pad that just evokes um, almost a soundtrack on its own.
So this one has sort of that classic Mellotron quality to it. And then you can do the whole tape trick. I love it. It can also be a very emotional library. Let me just add a little bit of reverb to this one here. We like to record them that way. So we also have sustains, but these arcs are just containing some human emotional information that we can't just do with mod wheels. They have to be played that way to get that sort of human uh, swell. And there's also so many tonal morphings when an instrument crosses through dynamics that way that can be hard to replicate in technology. And you can totally do the Mellotron with this sort of stuff. And there's so many sides to this library. It contains over 80, I think like 83 different multi-sample instruments. So when you start combining them or start using the effects, it's sort of an eternal goldmine of true vintage sounds. But to show you a completely different angle on how to approach this library, just because it's so vast, Check this performance out by Natalie. She's gonna go deep into the library and show you a variety of other sides from it in really in terms of musicianship and how you can also approach these instruments really in a sort of playable musicianship's fashion. Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Natalie Tenenbaum and today I'm gonna be checking out the Vintage Mellow uh, keyboard sound library from Soundpaint. This is such a cool library as a keyboard player. I absolutely love it. There are some really cool sounds in here. And without further ado, let's get into it and test some of these out. Let's go. Brass. It's cool because like every time you hit it, it sounds different. Like a short hit. like a pad vibe. Hey, <laughs> that's cool. I like that. I'm going to heart it. Let's check out a couple of the keyboard sounds. So this is Clav 70s Super Dust. Cool. Again, each hit is like, each note is different. 
and then each time you hit the note, it's different. Cool. Uh, let's see what uh, Journey Keys is. That's the journey that was uh, referred to here. saying this on like every video but this is untouched this is just like what the part sounds like I didn't do any effect process but it's that deep sampling it just makes it sound so rich it doesn't even need like that's cool I'm gonna heart that one I like that journey okay Mystic Tines? Cool. It's almost like a steel drum vibe. harmonics. What does that sound like? It's very cinematic. Old Mallet. What does that sound like? Ooh, I like that. going along liking every single patch here. <laughs> Winter Bells. Very seasonal. I feel like this is like a hip-hop track. Again, I have not added a single effect yet to any of these. It's just literally what they sound like out of the box, which is amazing. Organ, dust it off.
that. <laughs> I already hearted that one. Hockey. I think that means... Purple rain. Obsessed. I love that. Ah, so good. E Grand Fire Girl. Has a vibe to it for sure. I feel like it'll be fun with like an ARP, just being experimental here. Let's see what that comes like. Fun, okay. So like a fast, a fast ARP, two octaves. Let's see what that is. Yes, that's exactly right. Now we're gonna do my favorite reverb of all. Let's see. Find this to this guy right here and make it interesting. Let's see. Very fun. This is the uh, Glass Grand. Oh, yeah. that like harpsichord quality to it which the next batch is harpsichord so that's cool let's see this one Lennon
That's cool because it really feels like... This is like individual samples. It's not just like the same thing repeated over and over again. Love that. Warm Rhodes Keys. Ooh, I like that. love all of these strings this is a whole other bracket of sounds over here we have strings we have voices let's do strings that sounds like a real string let's do like slight reverb on it and see what that sounds like let's do lexi i don't know i don't know let's see this forever. What's Tremolando? I haven't tried that one yet. Nice. When you leave it, it has this little, I like that. All right, so we were in the string category. Let's check out the um, trill half. Oh, cool. Okay, so it's like a half tone trill. Ooh, I like the way it ends. So I'm not really like adding any effects or anything. I just want to see what they sound like dry. This is whole step. so cool. Oh, it's a whole vibe. It's a whole step and a whole vibe. I like that. Okay, so the next category of sounds is voices. Let's see what, um, what a dream chant sounds like. Vocal swell. I throw a vocal swell. Let's see what that sounds like. 
Oh, that's cool. I like that. That where that was going. Let's see with a little reverb what that does. Lexi. Gate, maybe that would sound cool. I don't know. I'm just playing now. Let's see. Ah, I like that. That's cool. That's really cool. That's a cool sound. I'm gonna I'm gonna save this one. I'm gonna call this um, gated. A choir, I guess. I'm gonna call it uh, vintage mellow get a choir. Save in my custom design. I like that. All right, let's go back to parts. Myth choir. I like this one. Let's see what it is. Again, I mean, this is just for fun. Let's see. Maybe plate reverb? I don't know. This is so cool. I love the sound. Lucky Laws. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, what this is, but it's cool. I like that. Is that how you pronounce it? Yogic choir. Choir of, of yoga people? Is that what it is? Let's see. What happens at the end? fade out of this thing. I wonder, I don't know, maybe EQ? I'm just playing at this point, I don't know.
interested, but I like that. Hmm. Stereo imager. Oh, no, I'm just playing now. Maybe a little uh, chorus on the chorus. Cool sound. All right, so moving on, we have uh, Woods. Let's see this uh, flutter. Oh, cool. Super fun to layer this with some other stuff, but for now I'm just checking out these individual parts. Let's see. Staccato. I'm sure, this is also fun to arp and stuff. Stackmo. Just as a curiosity, just for fun. Let's see. That's cool. That sounds that sounds pretty cool. Delay, uh, or maybe my favorite reverb. Not too crazy, just a little bit. Let's see. some like funky intervals maybe? I don't know, I'm just playing. It's like a staccato thing. It's like becoming this like super cool arp now. I love it. Let's see. Let's put like a little distortion on it. See what that sounds like? See, that's like a whole other... If I heard that on a record, I'd be like, what is that? I would never think it was... Just two steps ago, it was like this, like staccato wood instrument from the vintage mellow library who knew all right so a couple other ones we have here actually let's go to the one i hearted the wood sustain vibrato let's see wow i love the way these sounds end Okay, so Woods Trill Half Note. See this being like a super fun layer on a track. It's almost like an old Hollywood, like weird. It's 
Cool. I like that. I did like it. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is still in the parts. We're looking at the piano, sad hammered. Let's see what that sounds like. So let's check out a few of the programs now and see what those sound like. All right, so let's start with the top. Uh, Beyond Retro, let's see what that sounds like. Ah. Whoa. cool instrument. I wonder with more reverb what that would be like. Oof. Very, very cool. I like that. And I like it. Next one we have is uh, Brass Pad. epic. I love the end of these sounds. Brass sample. That sounds good. long sample and it sounds good. Again, the second time I hit it was different than the first time.
Yeah, that that's believable. That's believable brass, which is hard to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna like that. Again, I still haven't added anything. This is just the way it is. Cool. Brass take it slow. <laughs> to me. I like that. These are some good brass patches. Cavernous Mystic Times. I can't wait to hear this one. Sounds cool. The low notes. Ooh. Again, this is something I feel like I'm not always the best at creating these arps, but let's try it. I just feel like it would be fun to do like a random arp on this one. I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay, let's see. See, that sounds cool to me. I like that. I didn't even mess with any filtering or anything yet. This is just... Let's see what... Uh... What can we do? We filter this? What do we do with it? I don't know. Let's assign this to this also. See what that does. Hmm. High pass is cool. Cool. All right. That was a fun little uh, ride. Okay, clavinet. Let's see what that is. This is Nick Samurad. Shout out. This I love that. All right, let's see. Complete ensemble.
It's a vibe. As, what does it have here? We have the uh, Lennon piano, the Mythic Choir, which I hearted. So two sounds that I individually hearted in the parts are here. No wonder I like this. D6 taped. Seriously. It'll be always fun to play like classical music and on sounds like these like seriously <laughs> cool uh dirty 70s clav It's a distortion that makes it sound make it sound uh, extra dirty. I like that. I hearted this one. This one's called Donny, Donny. Oh, it's Oregon. It's... All right. Let's see. Um... sound. All right. E grand chorus. Vibe piano. Indeed, I love the noise. This 
one's called uh, Ethereal String Hits. Cool. This one is called Fairy Tone EP. filter piano. Interesting. Oh, the hockey organ. Yeah, we did this. Dramatic, I like it. Patriotic even. House organ. Imagining. Oh, yes, yeah, so this one has the vibiness. Leslie's lover, okay. Oh, yeah. Choir pad.
cool. Just has some uh, chorus, some filtering, and a little compression. Sounds great. FM ish bass. piano I haven't tried. What is that? Oh, I love when it does that. Oh, they end like almost at the same time. Very cool. I like that. Okay. Haunted piano. Oh, this one of the reverb is in and out. Let's see. It's very horror filmish. I like it. Go crazy, okay. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Fun. Let's see whirly. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's see. Fun. Modern vocal pad. Wow. Such a cool sample. Love that. Ooh, Neo Soul Roads.
Very, very nice sound. Gangster stab. I gotta hear that one. Oh yeah, gangsta. Okay, let's see this one. Old jazz piano. Sounds like um, some kind of like steel drum almost. Very cool. Organic mellow. So that's a beautiful sound, though. Cool. Organsmic. Okay. zone. All right. This one's called uh, Careful. Uh Uh-oh. Be careful. I like that. Very dramatic. Um, hmm. Bad stars. Oh, we're 
much sound. I like that. Damp and melancholy. Take care. pronouncing this crack. Let's see. done pizzicato we've done a couple of these tremolo piano let's see tremolo piano ballad harp piano tried a good amount. Maybe let's try one more. Winter Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, one more. 
Let's try Pluck Fate. So I think we've done quite a bit of these. What's, what's this one? Uh, chant Cheap Tape Machine. I really mean it when I say this is a deep library. Um, I want to show you three more performances by Peter and Rashi and Nicolas Semret, really just showing again different approaches to it. Um, I almost don't feel it's really a, we shouldn't be calling this like a library. It's sound, first of all, it just sounds super boring to say a library. This is really an instrument, um, but it's many, many different instruments and many, many different parts that almost creates an infinite amount of combinations in terms of creating really old school, true, faithfully recorded to tape as we should do it um, to bring out that retro, that true retro feeling.
Yeah. <laughs> 